Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to play Nautic Uloka. This is a game that supports one to four players. It's for ages eight and up, and the average play time is 30 minutes. So Ida Lee and I actually covered this game before. I'll be attempting a solo playthrough today. This is actually my first time attempting the solo playthrough, so as I always say, I might get a rule wrong or two, but I am here to spread awareness, have some fun, and show off some really cool games. So the board is two-sided. One side is for multiplayer and the other side is for solo. What you're looking at here is the solo board. You're also going to take the first player marker and put it on the one side. There's a little arrow here and you're going to point it toward the purple quadrant, I guess. Well, not quadrant. The, I guess, section. This is the purple area here and it's hard to see, but the numbers are actually color-coded purple. So you start the game off with this pointing toward the purple section and then over here is looks like yellow and over here is green. And from turn to turn, um, I will be simply taking dice as is normal in the multiplayer game, trying to fill up my jars over here. And it, if you've played the multiplayer game, it's very similar. In between my turns, the Tempest will do things to try and mess me up. My goal is to score greater than zero points. I know you're like, well, that's easy. I mean, you just score one point and you win the game. How hard is this? Well, at the end of the game, you're going to be docked in a lot of different ways. So um, you have to kind of play efficiently and think about what you're doing. So uh, like typical setup, all of the inside spaces get four random dice put in here and all of the outside spaces get five dice. I'm pretty sure that they all contain the right number of dice, but I have a migraine and I may have miscounted, but again, we're having fun with this. All right, so there's also this black die. This black die will be used by the Tempest on its turn. This is not used in the multiplayer game. You're gonna have stacks of victory point tokens over here. They go in order. Uh, they go from two to eight, I believe, and there's some duplicate numbers in there. As also part of setup, I'm gonna be dealt three cards, which I've already done, and I'm going to discard one of them. My secret color, well, not so secret, my special color is blue. And for every space that I satisfy on my completed jars that are blue, I'm gonna score an extra point. So that's why I discarded this card out of my three, because there are no blue spaces on here. So I'm trying to keep as many spaces as possible for blue dice so that when I complete these, they count toward my bonus end game goal. Then you've got your player pawns here. The game is played over 12 rounds. For the first half of the game, I'll be using these six, and then we reset for round two, and then we use these six pawns over here. The difference between single and multiplayer is that these actually stay on the beach spaces on the outside and block my attempts for future placement. So this will be quite interesting to say the least. Okay, so I think for my first turn, and what I have to do on my turn is pick one of these beach spaces and put my pawn there, then choose one of the directions, call out a number, and pick up all of the dice of that number. I would prefer not to pick up any purple dice because I have nowhere to put them. If I do end up getting dice that I cannot place, they go to the Tempest, which is the bad guy, and they get a point for every die that you couldn't place for your entire playthrough. So giving the dice to the Tempest is bad. We do not want to do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go here, I think, and I might go in this direction. I do have my laser pointer just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I could have gone this way as well. Again, there are two directions that you can go in. You're just going to go in a straight line, um, but I kind of like the number five here and there are no purple fives. So I'm gonna choose the number five and I'm gonna take that one and that one and these two over here. Hopefully I don't fat finger anything. And I'm now gonna place these dice among my various cards. 
Um, I think I'm going to put that one there and that one here. I'm trying really hard not to fill up my greens too quickly or my yellows too quickly because um, if I if I, all I have is blue, then I'm going to be giving a lot of cards to the Tempest. So I'm trying to leave a lot of options open if I can. Now the Tempest is going to take its turn. It will simply draw a card from the deck, and it is yellow. All we look at is the color of the little, I guess, token or whatever on the jar it's yellow that means he gets to take the top token the victory point token which is two here and again they go in ascending order and that goes into his victory point pile which i'll put up there after that he's going to roll a die and it is one so we're going to find the one space amongst all of this mess uh, let's see it's two and one there we go so all of the dice from that location are gone now we rotate the first player marker. There's, it's kind of hard to see, but there are little arrows going clockwise like. So on the two player side, they go counterclockwise. So we're going to rotate this this way and make it point toward this section. And now we're going to take our turn again. So for my second turn, I think I'm going to go here and go down this path and call out the number three. I do not see any purple threes there, which is good, and I don't see more than one yellow and one green three. So I'm just gonna take all of the threes from that line. And I think that is all of them. So now I'm gonna place these. This is complete, this is there, and this is that and so that's awesome we have completed this card i'm going to go ahead and just move these dice over to the box because we are done with them and we have scored our first point <laughs> uh, hopefully the first of many all right so what we're going to do now is uh unlike the multiplayer game we get to draw two cards and we get to choose one i kind of like this card because it's going to be easier to do However, there's a lot of purple out there, and I do not have purple. Uh, and there's only one blue one here. I'm, I'm somewhat tempted to go with this one just for the blue spot, but having a lot of purple on here, that might be beneficial because there's still a lot of purple dice that I could... Yeah, and there's two green spots. All right, I'm going to go ahead and choose this card, and then I'm going to discard this one. I also get the top brown victory point token because I scored a brown card. So I'm going to take that and put that over here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And now the Tempest is going to take their turn. They're going to draw a card and they are score going to score the red one up there. So they get the two and it goes here. And now they're going to roll the die. It is a three. So all the dice on the three space will go away back into the box. We now rotate it this way. All right, and now it is facing this section. Okay, so I think for the next round, I'm going to place a marker. Yeah, I'm gonna do that down here, and I'm gonna go up this way with it and call out the number five. So now I'm gonna take all of the fives. I'm pretty much looking for anything but yellow. I do not wanna take yellow and give it to Tempest because I have no yellow spaces to fill. Purple five, blue five, and green five. All right, that's a lot of dice to assign. That's good for us. Um, so a green would go there. We can fill in some purples. We're not gonna complete any cards, mind you, but we are one away from completing this card here. With that being said, the Tempest is going to draw a card. It is brown, so it gets the top one, which is the number three. That gets added here. He is going to roll the dice. It is three, so the number three loses all of its dice wherever it is. Three, all gone. So I've rotated the first player marker to face this direction again, and this is probably gonna come and bite me. There, there's two things I was thinking of doing. One was to grab the sixes from here, but that's a lot of leftover sixes. There's like two of them that would be passed on to the Tempest. 
There's uh, two purple, which is great. Um, and then, but there's a green six there and there's a blue six there. That's wonderful. But then we've got some extra blue dice. <sighs> that is, it's, it's tempting though. I was really tempted to do this. But that would result in, and there's a yellow six here that would be passed to the Tempest. So that, these cards would be, both of these would be completed, but then I would be giving two points to Tempest, which I don't know if I'm ready to do. I think I'm going to go the safer route and go this way with it. I wouldn't be giving anything to the Tempest, and I'd complete one card and almost complete the other one. I don't know if that's the right move or not, but that's what we're going to do. Now, I cannot put my token here, so I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to take all the sixes from that row. It's not too many, but that might be what we're looking for at this point. So one purple is going to go here, and one green is going to go here, and one blue is going to go here. We have now completed this card, which is awesome. So all of these come back to the box, and I get a yellow victory point token there. That comes down here. We're going to draw two cards and pick one to keep. None of these are blue. Nasty. Okay, so I'm looking for variety. I kind of like this one because of the variety. That gives me some options to do. This is two, though. Um, there's still a lot of green dice out here, so that would make my life a lot more difficult if I went for this one. So I might just... Here's the thing, though. If I go for this one, I'm going to have a tough time trying not to pick up green dice. It's going to be rough, but I think we're going to give it a shot because I, those two points are kind of hard to ignore. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this one. Now the Tempest is going to draw a card, and it is the brown token. So he gets a brown one here, and he's going to roll the die. It's a one. Well, all of the... Nocticuloca. I, I I keep mispronouncing that. My my anorexic brain keeps saying something else. But anyway, all of the dice here are gone, which is great. Um, so we don't lose anything. And now we move that. And now we think about what we want to do next. Okay, I really didn't want to have to do this, but I need to start getting a lot of purple dice. So I'm looking at this here, and I think I'm going to call out. I'm going to regret it. I think I'm going to look at the number two. Um, that gives me this one, this one, this one, and this one, but the green two is not placeable. So um, I'm going to put my marker here, and I'm going to take the number twos along that line. All right, so yeah, unfortunately, that green here goes to the computer. That's going to be worth one point for it at the end of the game. But I have three purple dice. I've got a lot of purple that I need to place. That luckily allows me to complete this card. And I can start working on this one. Two purple, one yellow. I have now completed this, so I'm going to gain a brown four. These go back to the box. And now I'm going to draw two and choose one to keep. Preferably one that has options on it. Um, I'm tempted to take this one because it has options, but... This one has the more blue, and more blue is great. On top of that, um, the computer has two brown, and I've got two brown. At the end of the game, we're going to be looking to see his majority. And then the rest of the stack will flip over, and there's one-pointers on the reverse side of these. And whoever has majority gets all of the remaining tokens at, at flipped value at one. So... Um, I kind of want to push brown if I can and, and gain these to boot. I think that's going to be very helpful. None of these are going to score points, though. My concern is there's still a lot of green out here, and I feel like having the ability to get green... Yeah, oh, man, I'm so tempted. All right. Yellow... You know what? Yellow wouldn't be bad either. You know what? I think I'm going to go with this one. That'll give me more options for the next round. The computer is going to draw, and it is red, so that red comes over here. He's going to roll the dice. One. A lot of ones today. These come off, yep, because they're facing that, and this comes this way. All right, so I think I'm going to go this way again, and I'm going to put my token. This is for the last 
part of the round one, I guess. Again, the game is divided into two parts, round one, round two. I'm out of pawns here, so this is the end of that. I'm going to choose the fours and take all of the fours. And I'll be able to place all five, hopefully. So there's a purple one there. I'm going to finish this one off here, and I'm going to start working on that one. Not terrible, not terrible. I'm going to take all of these off and put them over here. That gives me a yellow one. That's a three-pointer. Not not great, but it's it's what it is. And this comes to me, and I get to draw two and pick one. Again, this would give me options and also help me with brown. I'm very tempted to do that because this card neither has blue or purple on it. So... Uh, if I went with this one, I'd have to stay away from blue. Not ideal, considering yeah, I think I might go with this one. Uh, but if I take too many of these, then I'm not going to get a whole lot of points at the end of the game. So it's, it's kind of a trade-off. How quickly can I finish this card? That's going to be the question. We're moving into a new round, and the board will reset. So I'm hoping that through the reset, We'll have enough dice to completely wipe this card in one go without taking too many blue dice. So I think I'm going to take that one and discard this one. The um, computer will go ahead and draw a card. It is a yellow, so it gets a yellow token, and it's going to roll the die. It is a six, so all of these come off. All right, so that concludes the end of the first round. I'm going to reset the board. I've randomly reset the board. Again, there are five dice on each of the spaces along the outside and four dice for each space on the inside. We rotated this off camera to point toward the purple again, and I'm looking at this going, what do I do now? This kind of jumps out at me. Um, I, I, I'm looking for anything but blue, and I see some fives in this line that are not blue, so I think I might start there. Um, I also have a free space here and here. Now, I think I may want to cut... I'm going to pick this one so that I don't cut this off completely. So I'm going to choose this one down here, and I'm going to go in this line and take all of the fives. It's not a whole lot of them. But, I, you know, I kind of need to get... <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from giving Tempest any blues at the moment. That's all That's all of them? Ugh, I thought I saw more. All right, that's fine. So I'm going to put that one there, and that one there, and that there, and that there. So we've completed this card. This goes back into the box. No points, but we do get a yellow victory point token from the top of the stack, and it is a four, which is going to help us later. And now we will draw two cards, and I'm already liking this one only because of the blues. We need as many blues as possible for our special color, so I think I'm going to keep this one. We still have a purple here, so that's not like at all terrible. The computer is going to draw. And it is a yellow card, so he gets the yellow token. Number five, unfortunately. And now he's going to roll the dice, and all of the dice in four are gone. Okay, and this comes down like so. All right, so I spent some time looking at this, and I kind of like this. Um, I want to be careful not to block off this completely by putting this here. So I think... I'm going to put a marker up there and shoot for the number five. So I get that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Lots of dice. I'm pretty sure I don't go over, but, you know, maybe I miscalculated. So we got a green, a yellow, a purple. This card is done and done. Two blue. And a yellow. I don't think that could have gone any better. This is now completed. These go back in the box. And I get a yellow victory point token. Oh, that's the computers. Take this one. It's also the number five. I get to draw two cards. And they don't have points on them. 
<sighs> this one is actually, see, I have green and yellow over here, and I've got a green here. I kind of like this one only because it gives me more options with green, but are there a lot of purple dice still out there? Yes. But there, it looks like there's just an equally amount. I don't know. Not without sitting here and trying to math this out. I'm not going to do that and waste your time. Uh, another thing to consider are the tokens I would get for completing them. He's got the majority on red. He's got two red already. I have none. I feel like I need to keep up with brown and try and get the majority on brown. So I think I'm going to take this one to try and beat him on that color. So I'm going to discard that one. All right, so let's go ahead and draw one for the Tempest, and it is yellow. And he is really, him and I are fighting this yellow. And I was going to roll the die, and the number was two. All right, so the number two in all this mess is that one. All the dice are gone. And this rotates toward the left side. All right, so I'm not a big fan of this, but my options are quickly becoming limited. I'm going to go here and go down this here and just take the sixes. That will ensure I don't get any to the Tempest, but it's not a whole lot of dice either. So all the sixes is just these three. It's unfortunate. Another reason I chose that is because this is pointing this way, so he's going to be taking all the dice, well, from one of these spots. So um, this also allows me to get rid of some of these. I could do like that one, that one, and this one. And then all I need for my next turn is to grab a couple of greens and a per uh, blue, and I can complete both of these cards in one file swoop. It's not exactly what I wanted to do, but it's really the only thing I could see that would not give anything to him. All right, so moving on, um, he's going to draw a card. It is red. He's going to take a red token, and he's going to roll the die. It is a six, so all of the dice from here are removed. And this is going to rotate this way. All right, so that wasn't terribly difficult. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go this way uh, with it. So... I could also, I was thinking about going this way too. I just need two green and a blue. And I'm not sure which is better. I could do the number five here and take those two green fives and that blue five and nothing else. Or I could go this way with it and take the number two. There's two green twos and a blue two. And I'm just trying to figure out like which one is better. In the future, I can only take from here and here, and here and here. So I don't think it really matters which one. Actually, it might. You know what? I think I'm going to take the fives, because the other paths do not cross this up here. This one, if I go, if I go this way and go for the twos... Mm, I don't think it really matters. Okay, let's, yeah. All right, let's just, let's just do the fives, just, just to make this easy on myself and to keep the video moving. So I'm going to put a pawn here and just take all of the, take all the fives, because if I go this way with it, it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. But um, we're going to do five, five, and five. Maybe it does, and I'm just missing it. But hey, that's, that's everything I need to complete both of these cards, which is fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna score them one at a time. I get a red one. Don't really have any majority chance on red, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna draw two cards and pick one. Um, okay, so I'm gonna quickly look at these, and I'm looking at the spaces and seeing what's left. There's a lot of green here, so I think, well, I, both of them have green. Uh, <laughs> Which one would I have the chance of completing at the end of this? I don't know if I really will have the chance. I'm going to go with, I'm going to stick with brown just because. Um, that might be a mistake, but I'm going to go ahead and score this one as well. That's a brown victory point token. And that comes down here. I'm going to draw two more. Ooh, lots of blues. All right. 
I'm going to maybe go for this one and try and... All these blues here would be fantastic, but my question is, can I complete this card by the end of the game? Can I get three blues from somewhere and two yellows from somewhere to complete this card? I don't know. Um, I'm going to take it anyway because that's going to give me the most points with this special color. Don't know if I screwed up there, but maybe I did. All right, so the Tempest is going to draw a card. It is brown, because of course it's brown. Five, and he gets five points for that. And now he's going to roll the die, and it is a four. So all the fours are gone already anyway. So we're going to rotate this this way, and we're almost done. Okay, so unfortunately, I mean, I sat here mathing this for the last couple minutes, and I don't think there is a way for me to complete either of these cards. I could be wrong. I could be missing something. Um, I was hoping to try and just complete this one to get three blues down here so that I could score my special color at the end of the game. But I honestly don't think that's going to happen. Um, instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and take all of the twos in this direction. And that's going to be one, two, three blues. I was also thinking about here and taking all the number fives. There's only a couple of those, um, but I, I'm, I'm out of options. I mean, there's also the sixes. That's three sixes as well. So it's, it's a toss up as to which option is best. But if I put my pawn here, then I won't be able to take the twos from here. And either way, I don't think it really matters. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much game over. I still get a, a victory point, though, for every die that's on these unfinished cards. So I'm going to just try and grab as many as possible. Um, I might actually go with the sixes here and then eventually the twos here, assuming that none get discarded. I think I'm going to have to do this first to try and I don't want him discarding all of these sixes that would be bad so I'm going to do that and take all of the sixes from this row um, the ones are also a possibility the ones would give me the two yellow here and a purple one over here but I still cannot grab three blues with this spot here it's just not possible um, so I'm just going to take these and just yeah assign them out and just try and get as many points as possible for them. Okay, um, and I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else I can do with that. The Tempest is going to draw a card. It is a yellow, so he's going to score that. He's going to roll the die. It is a three, and of course, all of these. <laughs> Oh, that bugger. Oh, that little jerk face. Uh, you gotta love it. All right, well, this is gonna be an easy one. I only have one spot to go, which is here. I could take the twos from here or the fives from here. It really doesn't matter as far as I can tell. So I'm just gonna take the fives and put them here. He's going to draw a card. It is a red, so he takes four points there. And, I mean, I suppose I could roll this and just to, just to sort of... <laughs> finish this off. Uh, two. All of these are gone. The smoke has settled, and the final score is me 53, Nocticula 52. I only scored 31 points from my point tokens, and it scored a whopping 51, but that was to be expected. It was getting point token after point token after point token every single turn, so it's no surprise to me that it won all the majorities. When you win a majority, you flip all the tokens remaining in the stack over to their one side, and you add those in. So you add these at their point value, plus all the ones that they won. The only thing I did was tie the Browns, so I got half and it got half. But it scored a crap ton of points from all of those tokens. Um, I made up for that with my jars. I got nine points for all the cards that I scored, the, the point values in the upper right-hand corner here. And I got 11 from my favorite color of blue. I counted all of these spaces on my cards and it came out to 11. And then um, I get a point for every two leftover dice that I did not score. So there's these two and these two, that's two points, and this is just left over. So that's two. So it's 51 plus the one that I fed it here 
gives it 52 and I have 53. And again, that's assuming that I didn't make a mistake along the way or, or that I did this correctly. Um, you know, I'm working off of a migraine here, but regardless of whether or not I won or lost, this was a lot of fun. I would totally play this again. The multiplayer plays well. The solo play is similar, but like, it's like decision paralysis city in the beginning. I've got so many choices, but then toward the end, because your pawns stay on the board, unlike multiplayer, you, you're left with one or two spots and you're like, how do I finish these cards? You're rushing to complete what you have and it's like, it's super stressful, but it's still a lot of fun. I would highly recommend this and the game is beautiful to boot. So that was Nocticuloca. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Take care.